Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome in once again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a really nicely made full custom out of South Africa from Plunkett Blade Works. Now, for those of you that have been following me for any length of time, you know that I'm a huge fan of knife makers out of South Africa. They always have the most amazing quality at what I always see is really great prices. And a lot of that really is that that uh, the, the rate of the, the US dollar versus the uh, South African Rand. But the fact of the matter is, they tend to be incredible values. Now, what we're used to seeing come out of these South African knife makers are fairly dressy, fancy, schmancy uh, kind of knives with uh, crazy anodized and, and uh, carved liners and bolster work and hand engraving and all kinds of very, very dressy things. And this certainly is not that. This is your basic everyday standard titanium frame lock. There's no extraneous finishing done on here. Um, nothing beyond what really is just the function of the knife, save for that beautiful hand rub satin finish that he's applied to this blade. Now, what that means is, number one, you're going to save a lot of money not having uh, all of those embellishments and engravings and high polished areas and whatnot. But you've also got a knife that you might feel may be more appropriate for your EDC lifestyle. Now, maybe not this particular one because this is the XL version. You might want to EDC perhaps the smaller one. Um, and as I mentioned that, let's get into the specs on this knife so that you know exactly what it is that I'm talking about here. Uh, first off, in the uh, XL version here, these are $560 shipped into the United States, that's with the DHL shipping and all that kind of good stuff. So you're paying right around 500 to 510 because it'll cost you about 50 bucks to ship from South Africa into the U.S. These are all handmade by Oliver Morris. He uh, actually goes by Ollie, and he's a one-man shop out of South Africa. The specs on this uh, is a 6AL4V titanium frame lock. We'll move this over here because it's important to get the specs written right over here. 6AL4V, whoa, decided to knock my camera all over the place. Let's try that again. 6AL4V titanium frame lock, nine inches overall. Yeah, it's a pretty big boy, but because it's pretty thin and there's holes everywhere, it's actually pretty lightweight. We'll measure that in a minute. This particular version in the XL gives you a 3.9 inch blade. If you prefer the standard version, it's a 3.3 inch blade. Obviously, it's going to be a lot easier to carry. Um, this is M390 steel and a hand rub satin. You've got ceramic bearings, ceramic detent. The standoffs are done in titanium as well as the thumb studs too. So what you've got here, oh, crazy action. Very fast, very smooth, and the, uh, by the way, let's take a quick look at that detent. Watch that detent just suck that blade in. Nice, nice, nice. Um, it's not a very heavy blade because he's ground this so insanely thin. By the way, this is a phenomenal cutter. It is crazy thin behind the edge with a full height flat grind, and then you have the harpoon up here, which by the way, a worn cliff with a harpoon, definitely, definitely an aggressive look. Uh, so it's a full height flat grind, so it comes down really, really thin. So if you're looking for an excellent cutter, this is absolutely gonna be the knife for you, whether you go into the XL or the regular size. I want to stop for a second and give a, a really big thanks to my friend Martin Nell, who is a knife retailer out of South Africa, and he's known as the Knife Guy. That's the name of his uh, name of his business, and I'll put all of his information down at the bottom of the screen. Uh, he actually brought this knife with him into the U.S. and got it into my hands last week. He was uh, hoping to hand it off to me at Blade Show, but I was unable to make it to Blade Show, so he shipped it. Um, from the hotel directly here, and um, I couldn't, I, I couldn't uh, say thank you nearly enough because this thing really is wild and cool, and it was a maker that I had no previous experience with, 
And that's one of the things that, I, as you guys know, I enjoy more than anything is to learn about new makers, but also expose you guys to new makers as well, because it's a little bit more... Um, I'm going to say it's a little bit more likely that you'll be able to get a knife from him than say somebody like, I don't know, Peter Recenti or, or somebody, uh, because his books aren't overly uh, crowded because he doesn't have a huge presence in the U S or much outside of his market in uh, South Africa. So that's always great to come out with a knife that's uh, full custom. That's, uh, what I feel to be pretty affordable. Uh, and from a maker who has, uh, some availability. Now, he does list his books as closed right now, uh, but he does list knives occasionally for sale on Instagram. So you definitely want to follow him on Instagram and uh, try to get your hands on one because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to want one of the smaller ones of these. I really, really, really like this. And this is going to have some definite applications for me for carry. But the small version, in, in, or should say standard size version, 3.3 inches, is going to make a really, really awesome EDC. And sometimes, you know, we, we, we like our fancy knives and it's cool to have uh, bolsters and have inlays and have cool scales and all that. But sometimes I really just like having a bare bones, no frills standard titanium frame lock. And this fits the bill. I like the holes that he put in there. Um, I think if I had one nitpick, it would be that I'd, I'd love to see the holes moved back probably about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch because then you wouldn't see that right there in that first hole. You wouldn't be seeing the blade taking up part of that hole. Uh, if they were all moved back, then you'd have blade uh, showing in all the holes. And I think just aesthetically that would be nicer. Uh, but it's also nice that he did the holes on both sides. Typically, you don't see somebody do it on the uh, the lock side as well. So uh, he did put in the extra effort. I think that's a, a really nice thing. Lock bar tension on this is perfect. He did do the lock bar relief on the inside of the lock bar. So you have a cleaner look on the outside. So again, he's thinking outside the box and doing something, even though it's a very bare bones, basic style of knife. Uh, he's doing little things like that, that make this a little bit more of a premium offering. The only other nitpick I would really have, and it's something that he's already changed. This is uh, only the third uh, version of this knife that he made. And it's already been changed because Martin actually brought it up to him is uh, he ground this down so thin that it left a pretty sharp area right there, right where your thumb wants to go, it wants to dig in. Uh, however, he has already altered that and he's begun rounding that off. I'm gonna round that off on, on my grinder for my knife here because I, I just don't wanna cut myself on there because it is actually pretty sharp. Uh, but as mentioned, he has made that correction on future knives, so that's no longer a concern. But it, it was something that I wanted to bring up because if somebody were to start asking me down in the comments, this saves me from having to answer that question. Uh, really, really nicely done grinds all the way around. Beautiful hand rub satin. Let's see if I can get a nice angle on that and show it. Probably going to see a lot of my fingerprints on there at this point, but just beautifully done. Nice, clean hand rub satin. And normally I would want to see the same hand rub satin up on the harpoon. And at first I did on this one as well, but I kind of like the contrast to be honest with you. So you've got the, uh, the vertical, you know, the, the belt grinds up on the harpoon, and then you have the hand rub satin on the main bevels. And that's kind of an interesting uh, way of doing it. I've never, I don't think I've can recall very many makers doing that. So uh, Ali started making uh, folders back in 2015. Here's the funny thing. He had done that without ever holding a proper folding knife. See, the thing is, Ali's only 26 years old, and he lives in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. And he says he is pretty much on the beach. So I'm going to assume that he's kind of far out there away from a lot of people. Um, and I know he's away from a lot of the knife makers that are in South Africa. So... As crazy as it sounds, he taught himself how to make a folding knife just looking at pictures and videos of knives on the internet. He had never really held a folding knife. And I think that's insane. That's crazy. By the way, he's also making, uh, he's making these things completely self-taught with the most basic of tools in what 
has got to be the smallest shop I have ever seen pictures of. Martin shared a picture uh, with me of his shop. And when I say it's, it looks like a broom closet, I'm not really exaggerating. I can't imagine his shop is any larger than like 10 foot by 12 foot, maybe 10 foot by 10 foot. It, it's, like a, it's like a prison cell. It is the tiniest thing with only a handful of tools in there and a drill press. Like it's, and, and the, his grinder is this teeny little, uh, cheap little grinder, nothing. I mean, it's not like a TW90 or any kind of crazy grinder that you'd see in most knife maker shops. So when somebody tells you that you have to outfit your shop with the latest and greatest and most expensive machines and this and that, that is not the case at all. That will make your life easier. It will allow you to make knives more quickly and more consistently and more easily. Uh, but it doesn't actually make the knife. It's the knife maker's talent that's making the knife. There are plenty of guys out there who don't even own machines. Everything is done, you know, with hand tools. So yeah, think about that. It's crazy. Let's do some size comparisons here. Oh, I, I didn't uh, weigh it like I promised I would. So let's do that. Weight is 4.8 ounces. So even though it's a large knife, honestly, that really doesn't weigh a lot for the size of knife that it is. So let's get that right here. We'll put that right there in the middle. Uh, put it up next to something fairly large, my, uh, my Ziba S2 that I've had for a number of years. I think I've had this for since like 2015, actually. Uh, put these butt to butt as all things in life should be. And you see it is considerably larger than what I consider a full-size EDC-style knife. This is about as big as I go for a knife that I consider to be uh, EDC, and that's a three and a half inch blade on there. Uh, put it up against the uh, Terrain 365, which you guys know is a favorite of mine. Considerably larger there as well, but if you look at the blade lengths, we'll put them pivot to pivot, it's not an enormous difference. And one more for a uh, big beefy titanium frame lock, my DSK Tactical uh, Diamondback V2. Considerably larger than that, but here's the biggest difference. It is much, much slimmer. So it's not an overbuilt knife by any stretch of the imagination, uh, not in the blade stock th thickness and not in the frame thickness either. Another nice thing is he has a very slight contour going on with the frame. So there's a little, little light contour, so it's not completely flat. So that means it's going to feel really nice in the hand. He's knocked off all the harsh edges all the way around without making it look just like this shapeless blob. A lot of, man, I've seen so many knife makers do that where they round it so much that it loses the definition of the shape of the handle. And uh, he did not make that mistake here. Everything's soft enough that you've got no hot spots. Uh, but it has a clearly defined edge going all the way around. So you have a really nice silhouette. Um, I love the scallop right here. It, it just, it really, it's right exactly where your index figure wants to sit when you're cutting. Very, very comfortable. It doesn't do anything to give you more access to the lock bar. That's not what it's for. It's just, just a nice ergonomic thing. Uh, and I think it looks really nice too. I think as far as aesthetics, if I were to want to pimp this out just a teeny tiny little bit, um, I would probably uh, dish out the the uh, inner radius on the uh, on all the holes and leave that in a nice contrast satin. And I would probably uh, go back after after bead blasting this. I'd probably go back over and scallop this again so that it had a nice uh, satin finish to it as well. Because you've got such a glorious uh, finish on that blade that I think it would really uh, uh, accentuate this whole knife to have a little bit of a, a little bit of satin touches going throughout besides just the pivot. Uh, but overall, for a basic bare bones, great, reliable titanium frame lock, this is fantastic. I love the action. While I generally prefer flippers, you guys know that I really don't have a problem with uh, thumb stud openers at all as long as the action's nice. And whether I want to slow open it, which you can certainly do if you want to treat this like it's a Sebenza, 
uh, you certainly can. And uh, obviously flicking it, it works very, very well. I'm not a big middle finger flicker kind of guy, but it will, uh, it will do that as well as long as you're not putting pressure on the lock bar. And again, that action, it's such a large knife, it's hard to keep it all in frame while I'm doing this. But, I mean, you barely have to give it a little wiggle wiggle. And it goes right back down into the frame. So overall, uh, I'm pretty impressed. And I think for the money, for what you would spend on a high-end production knife or a mid-tier mid-tech knife, I think you're getting a really good value in a full handmade custom knife and one that he does not make knives available very often. Uh, his issue is in, in his part of the world, it's not always easy to get all of the materials. So he says he only produces maybe five or six knives in a month. So you know that if you make the investment and jump on one of his knives when they show as available, you know that you're going to be one of very few people that year that's even going to own one of the knives that he makes. And um, it's going to be even fewer when you get down to the size of the knife, the model that you pick, the uh, the finish that, you, that uh, happens to be on it, whether it has holes or no holes, or if it's satin finished or bead blasted or whatever else. It, that further reduces the amount of the same knives that will be out there. So if you like to have something special, something unique that not everybody else has, this is probably going to be a good way to go about it. Uh, it's very, very easy to carry because of how slim it is in overall profile. Um, yeah, it's a pocket monster as far as the, uh, the, the length of it and the height of it, but it's so slim that even as large as it is, it doesn't carry as large as it is, and uh, I really dig that. Just well made all the way around. There's, like I said, only those two nitpicks that I have on this entire knife. Nothing else that I would change. The pocket clip tension is perfect. Uh, it just the way everything was done. It was a practically made knife for somebody that actually wants to carry and use their knives, not just have one to show off and look pretty. Although I'm pretty sure. He'd be able to make a pretty, pretty knife if he wanted to because, again, you go back and you look at that hand rub satin and you realize that he does have the patience and the skill to put in that kind of work. And with that, guys, I'm out of here. I want to thank you guys, as always, for joining me. Please, uh, if you if you want to support the channel and get the chance to win free cool knives, head on over to Patreon right down here and uh, become a Patreon subscriber for as little as $5 a month. Uh, I love all my patrons. Thank you guys so much. You, you really help make the, uh, the channel what it is. And uh, we'll continue doing giveaways and expanding as much as I can. And I'll see you guys on the next video.